Greetings, I'm Professor K. In a new short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about using MetaGoField up inside of the CSI Analyst desktop. Here's a couple of caveats that you have to be aware of. Your IP address will be blocked by the search engines if they see that you're doing a number of random short searches. So, with that in mind, I'm using a VPN. And I can change my IP address in the VPN just by changing my location. So if my IP address being assigned to me by my VPN provider is being blocked, well then I'm just going to go find me another location inside the United States or anywhere in the world and then I will change my IP address. So if Las Vegas is being blocked, well then I'll just select Los Angeles. And in just a moment, I'll have a new IP address assigned to me courtesy of my VPN provider. Now if you use the CSI gateway, that should be done for you automatically courtesy of the Onion Network. Your IP address should be rotating from one server to the next and you should not have that problem. So either you need to reboot after each search and clear out your cache so that the search engines will stop blocking you or you need to get a new IP address. All right, so I'm going to go up here to start this by going to the Applications menu up inside of my CSI Analyst. And from here, I'm going to go to Online Investigations. And from the Context menu, I'm going to select MetaGoFill. Let me move this over just a little bit. And the first thing it wants is a case number. Now, everything up inside of the CSI Analyst is taken care of using a case number. So I'm going to associate this search with a case number and then I'm going to go look at the subfile or the subfolder that was built for me. All right, so I'm going to call this case 001 like so. I'm going to say OK and now I have to type in the target domain. But before I do that, let's just go take a look at my case folder over here on my desktop. Now this is where all my cases are stored. Now I can open this up and here's the folder that I just created. Currently, there's nothing in it. I'll close that out. Now I'm going to type in the name of the domain that I want to conduct this search for. For this demonstration, I've chosen Cali.org. I'm going to say OK. And now the search will begin, and it will start going through all the different document types that may be present on the Internet associated with Cali.org. And if I go over here to my Cases folder, You'll see that up inside of my case 001 folder, I now have a Cali.org folder. That's how well organized this search or anything that you do up inside of the CSI Analyst is done for you. All right, everything is going to be associated with a case up inside of the cases folder. All right, now you can start seeing the different results being returned here from my MetaGoField search. So we know that it's working. So MetaGoField is going to start off looking for PDFs and then it'll go into Docs, it'll go into Excel files, it's going to go into ODP files. It's going to search for all the different file types that are associated on the internet with Kali.org. Now when the search has completed, MetaGoField will pop up an HTML page with all of the search results for you allowing you to then access those search results if you so desire using the link provided inside of the HTML document. Now we can see that the search has completed. The HTML document is now being generated and now it pops up. I'm going to go ahead and close this and you'll see that we have the search results given to us here. We got some email addresses. We got some files and metadata that was found up on the internet for Cali.org. I can go ahead and close this out and now I can go into my cases folder and I'll go into the case number that I generated and here's my Cali.org folder and in here we have some of the results that were pulled down and saved inside of my subfolder for Cali.org. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about using MetaGoFill up inside of the CSI Analyst. Now, if you have any questions or concerns about any of the content that was presented to you in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.